Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel. I thought it was high time that um, I got back to the Celebration of Women journals. And a good place to start would be to bind in the signatures. Now, um, in a previous video, and I do have a playlist for Celebration of Women journals, I believe that I flipped through and show you, showed you the pages that I selected. I do know that um, a lot of people, and I don't know, maybe I'd include myself there, find the binding in one of the less <laughs> enjoyable um, parts of the process. However, <clears throat> I want to reassure you that with practice, it does get easier. And if you make a boo-boo, and if you've watched any YouTube's, uh, any YouTube channels for a while, you know that there's no shortage of boo-boos to be made, like having <clears throat> a page inserted upside down within a signature, mixing up the front and back of the journal, having the signature in upside down. So I think the the um, the thing to do is to take it slow bear down, <laughs> work through the process, and uh, know that if you make a mistake, they're all fixable. If, you're, um, if you have an exposed um, spine and it looks like, uh, you know, a bunny trail through the woods, it's that crooked, that's why... Um, lace and and fabric and so on was invented <laughs> to hide those sorts of mistakes if you have inserted something upside down simple enough you cut the thread or whatever string you use to bind it with and you fix it and you go back in if holes tear that can be reinforced with some strategic uh, placement of washi tape or paper or whatever. So enough talking, let's get to it. I also know that if you're a beginner, sometimes some of the tools and the processes seem a bit uh, overwhelming and kind of elusive and well, what did, what did she mean by that? So I let's let's just do this. I also will tell you that this one for this journal, it's a one signature. So hopefully there will be time in this video to do both this signature and this little guy here that has three signatures and, and a different process. I, to save time, used my centering ruler. No, let me back up. What I first did, okay, you'll know from a previous uh, video that I intend to use this lace and this hard anger piece around here. So less pressure on me for how the stitching is going to look. I also had various things pinned in here because I wanted them as a reminder to, to use them. So what I did, because goodness knows I have post-it notes coming out the yin-yang, I used post-its to mark to you know clip together some of these things that I want to keep intact. So this is a spare piece of paper that matches that. Oh, I guess, well, okay, these are the things. The real um, uh, tip or real trick that I hope is going to help me is within here, I've added a post. It's reminding me what I wanted to do. So it says envelope flap here, uh, flip here. So I know that once I have the binding done, I can begin adding that stuff and not have to think, well, what did I, what was my plan for that? Plus it removes some of the, the um, bulk and so on that occurs when you just have things willy nilly clamped in here. So girl with raspberry side pocket here. Now I could glue this in, but it just makes for a little more thickness and bulk. I also noticed when I held it in place that I'm going to have to cover this backside with something. Otherwise, I'm going to see the back of that. So 
those sorts of, I think I have one other here about uh, book page, book page flip out here. So I will put this aside for one moment and talk about this centering ruler. I'm not sure where I got it. I think it was a craft store, a little bit pricey, but again, if it saves time in the long run, sometimes, you know, it's well worth the investment. Okay, so basically the way this works is that on anything, well, let's use this cover. You line up the edges, wherever the edges may be. Let me show you on something smaller, perhaps. Okay, so I've got this piece of paper here. So, well, I already have a fold in it, so we're just going to assume that that's the center. But you can see that maybe I don't know where the center is. So I think, oh, over here I've got three and, and five sixteenths, and over here I only have two and a half inches. So clearly I'm going to keep moving, you know, left or right, whatever the case calls for, until... In fact, I find the center. So on this little piece of paper, it's two and seven eighths. And then if I needed to make the mark, I would make the mark. So basically, that's what I've done here as well. I can see that this is essentially, and, and again, I'm not going to measure this down to the micron, <laughs> even though maybe you think it feels like I am. Essentially, it's 12 inches. So even my math will tell me that the halfway mark is six inches. So what I did, and I, oh, I should say that I hope um, that this new setup here is going to increase visibility and have me out of frame less often. I What I did was I uh, MacGyvered, <laughs> I changed the phone holder from this gooseneck that I prefer, gooseneck holder, from a floor iPhone holder, because uh, this one has more, um, more open space at the top. It's not a solid piece of plastic. So I can see, like I was always able to see the bottom, but I wasn't able to see what was showing at this end of the, the camera's range. Plus, it also has a nice little opening on the side for me to have my phone uh, hooked up to the charger if I wish. Anyway, so all that to say that I hope you can see. So right here, with a pencil mark, I've marked the center. At the bottom, this is a little harder to see just because of the pattern. I've marked the center here. To save time... I also created a template. Now this is not quite as essential, um, perhaps with a one signature, and it may not even be that essential once you have a number of books, um, bound books under your belt. So basically I just randomly picked, you know, made a piece of paper out of, um, I did a, a ruler's width of paper Sometimes it would be narrower, sometimes wider, depending on how many signatures. Again, using my centering ruler, I found the middle of this thing and drew a line down the center. I also put a T for top. I have never done a five-hole pamphlet stitch, and I thought, well, let's keep the learning going here. So I marked. Again, I found the center. And... You know, you've probably seen enough videos to know that not everybody is that precise about, you know, it's got to be three quarters of an inch from the top and the bottom. and It can be whatever you want it to be. But I, for the purpose of this journal and this video, I'm aiming for a degree of precision. So, again, nine, nine inches tall. My center was right here, which means I have four and a half at each end. So then I just randomly, you know what, I think I might want to change this. And this is the time to change it, honestly. 
No, I won't change it. I was going to say I should move these top and bottom ones closer to the edge, but that probably isn't necessary. It would if I had some really um, skinny little uh, small pieces of paper and was afraid that this bottom and top stitch would not hold them. But I think I'm going to be fine. And I will just double check that before I actually um, get into it. Okay, so again, just, you know, Mark, you can see I had a couple of false starts there. I made my five marks. I just sort of made those little stars or crosses there to make sure that um, I know which mark I'm aiming for. Now, because this has paper and uh, I think, you know, an envelope, maybe, and then the fabric, I didn't want to have to, <clears throat> excuse me, use sheer brute force to make the holes. So I'm going to use my crop it out. When you're making holes, you have a choice of two settings, one eighth or three sixteenths. So the one eighth, and I'll just show you the side view here, is the smaller of the two holes and will be very adequate for this. And it will punch a nice, hopefully, nice neat hole through the fabric, which means, um, you know, it'll be easier to thread the needle through, not uh, fray and ravel the fabric. Again, not the end of the world if it wasn't, because I've showed you that I'm going to be covering it with lace. So, I have that at the ready. I also have my crinkle, crinkle. I have my signature. And it, we can see that it fits very well between top and bottom here. <laughs> top and bottom. And just a quick little reminder, and, and actually double checking that nothing is upside down. So, okay, let's just use this. So we see that if this was a typical, if I was just using a three hole stitch, this little guy here, this smaller page, might not get the, the same degree of, um, I want to say stability that the others do, that are full size and get caught in several places. Then I have this flip here. So <clears throat> if I leave this flip where I have it right now, this one will miss, that hole will miss it, but these two will catch it. So that, that's pretty good. If I was really concerned about it, though, I could move this closer to the top, and then, in fact, it would get caught by three stitches. And given that the bulk is typically at the bottom of a journal, maybe I will keep her near the top. I don't think any of these others are going to be an issue but I will keep checking for right side up. Okay, so that is fine. So because this is my sole little smaller page, I'll just tap it that way to make sure it goes to the top of the page. I will, I think I'm gonna do this in two operations. Now, I have lots of clips on hand here, and this was another reason to make this template kind of as wide as I did, so that I could clip it without it um, getting in my way. So I'm lining up this center line on the template with that little dot that I made there. And because this is such a good little clip, if you haven't seen these, they're in, it wasn't that easy to find, to be honest, but it, I did find it at um, Fabricland. 
and they came in a package of 12. A little pricey, but they're they're very much worth the, the money. Oh, <laughs> did you spot what's wrong with this picture? T is for top. Now, again, might not be the end of the world if I noticed it now, if I would have done it this way and, and realized it, then clearly I would have done it upside down on this as well. However, when if there were multiple signatures, you'd want to make sure that the top is the top is the top on every single one because otherwise you will have uh, something that maybe isn't quite as fixable. Okay, a little trouble seeing my bottom mark here, but I've got it. So I'm going to clip these things in place. <clears throat> now it's not that easy because I I need to see what I'm doing. The, the reason this thing is so nice and probably, I guess it's worth the money it costs, is because of this long reach. So you can see that I can go in a long way because of this, this deep, um, this wide reach. So I'm going to start at the top. Now I need to angle this a bit so I can see where that little blade is coming down. And because I have a star, it's a little easier to see. So I wanna be centered right on that little X that I made. Lovely. So I'll continue to do the same, making sure that I choose the little cross, not the boo-boo mark that I made earlier. This thing is really very strong. And then the final one. Okay, now we do want to remove the template, number one, because we need it elsewhere. And number two, we don't want to accidentally sew it in there. So, now maybe these pages are not exactly, well, they're clearly not exactly the same height as, let's give this one more tap. And if you were watching uh, Pam at the Paper Outpost, she also does a little chop, chop, chop here to make sure that they're in tight. So I'll probably use the same clips. You can see that my parchment paper is getting a little chewed up, but again, that is not. That'll just add to its um, to its charm. Okay, so I've got that clip, and of course, if you feel that you want to do more clips for more stability, then by all means do that. Okay, so we know that I caught my mistake on, on that uh, cover. So now I'm essentially, you can see that the template is longer than the pages because otherwise if it wasn't, um, the pages would be flush with the cover or extending past it. Yes, it was funny. Yesterday I was trying to, um, I needed some scrap paper to do some something. Would you believe I couldn't find any? In a place full of paper, I couldn't find any. Which was kind of sad. And eventually I found some old office paper with stuff on the, on the backside. Um, 
Okay, so I, if you can see that, I am centering that to the best of my ability. Maybe I will use just paper clips here now. A little less bulky. Actually, along with some longer ones would have worked a little better. And I will, because of course with all this putzing around, it probably moved. But I will double check again before I punch the holes. Okay, so I just had to adjust that slightly. Now, most people I know have a pouch or a box or some sort of a thing with their book binding stuff. Um, and I'll show you mine in a minute. Okay, I'm confident that that is where it needs to be. Now, if you don't have one of these guys, you can use a pokey tool. And I have, I think I probably have a few in here. This came from a screwdriver set just in the hardware store. I've got some clamps in here. I thought I had another one in here that was a bit of an antique. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You only need one. And, uh, well, I guess I could also say that depending on, look at all these needles. They are various thicknesses. They've got various sized eyes. Well, this isn't even a real, this one shouldn't even, I shouldn't even be showing you that. Pretend you didn't see. So obviously a, quite a difference in size. So you need to kind of uh, find the one that, whose eye is big enough for you to thread your, um, To thread whatever you're using like look at look at the difference there versus say this little guy here now I did a little mini book the other day which is not in reach um, clearly to you know pick the right tool for the job if you have a really thick fiber then obviously you need a bigger eye but you also need a much bigger hole then to get to get through that so the, the holes become a little sloppier depending on what you're uh, binding I don't this was a curved one depending on on what it is that you're binding into the page and how neat, like these holes are not going to be a problem because they're neat. But if, if I just made a hole with an awl and I don't have a blunt needle, it becomes very, um, it can become dangerous. <laughs> it can become dangerous. If you use a sharp needle and if you... Um, we'll need, and we'll need a needle in a minute, so I won't put those away just gently. Anyway, <clears throat> not only can you poke yourself and draw blood, but you can also, um, you know, wreck the, um, wreck the paper that you're trying to make the hole, or get the thread through. So again, you've seen this in action, so I'm going to concentrate on me being able to see and you just, 
you just trust that this is going to be good. Now, of course, I'm because I've used the template once, I'm just aiming into the same hole. Now, if you were doing it sort of with a hand tool, oops, that, oh, that's got a little sloppy there. You would let me concentrate, then I'll finish my sentence. Okay, if you were using an awl to make those holes, you may want to use a variety of things. There are on um, Crafty Cat, um, Amy sells book cradles through her Etsy store. I, of course, in the early days, had my husband build me one. So, of course, he used heavy duty, like three quarter inch plywood and so on. And you need kind of two men to lift it. Just kidding. Um, some people use a thick old phone book or another big book where they can sort of create this sort of a thing where they're, they're kind of ensuring that the holes they're making by hand are, in fact, going into... Um, you know, into the, into the gutter, um, as opposed to, you know, a quarter of an inch beside it or, you know, cockeyed in some way. Okay. So now I, to be honest, because I've never done the old, um, I like this. Did I do the tear test on this one before? Oh, that's good. Maybe, typically, at this point, the bookmaker would say, oh, and you use three times the height of the, the, um, the book per signature for sewing it in. I don't know if that's true for a five-hole stitch. So maybe just for the heck of it, I'll do four because I'm not afraid to have a little waste there if, if there is some. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, so nice, clean holes, thin thread. Let's pick a needle that is, mm, will I be able to thread it through there? Fairly blunt. Nope. Mm, let's use this one. And of course, you didn't see me wet the end of that. Okay, so pull enough through that it doesn't slip out when you're right in the thick of the action. Uh, to be honest, I didn't Google the order for, for doing this stitching. Let me get rid of this garbage. But I'll, I'll wing it. So, okay, two choices. If this was going to be an exposed spine, and I wanted some fancy dancy stuff on the outside, 
maybe a charm or beads or something dangling, I would start, I would come in from the outside, which means, because wherever you come, whichever direction you come from is where you're going to end up. But I said that I'm covering my spine. So I'm going to come, I'm going to come in through the inside. Leave a sufficiently long tail that you're not going to pull it through. I know that some people, even Nick the Booksmith, I noticed, will put a clip or something on the end to make sure that um, to make sure that her um, thread doesn't pull through. Now, because I only have one row of holes, one signature. I don't have to worry about, am I going crooked? Did I start out in the center set of holes and then veer over to one side or the other? And uh, because the uh, crocodile makes such a nice, neat hole, did I speak too soon? Because the crocodile makes such a nice, neat hole, typically, except when you're on video and just trying to say how smoothly this can be, there's not a problem, you know, finding your way. Uh, I wonder. I would say that I should probably go this way next. Again, I don't think that there is only one way to do this. So I'm going to now come back through the same hole. I mean, through that, that hole there. I'm going to jump over the middle one. I'm going to then come in from the outside. Oh, looks like I have way too much thread. That's not going to be a problem. Again, I don't mind. <laughs> Better that than too short. Okay, so then the, the, the thing to keep in mind here is you're making as you're making that last entry into the center hole. Oh. You see what happened here? Well, that's not very darn neat. We begin again. I should be um, flipping it over to see what I'm doing. Because it's fabric, it's going in easily. And again, you know, I could have left it for the sake of moving along because I know I'm gonna be covering it up, but that is kind of, that wouldn't be very good workmanship, would it? Okay. Leave a longer tail. This time I'm gonna go in from, by actually looking, not just feeling around. Then I went up this way, and again, I'm going to, because this fabric is quite a loose weave, it's also easy to, to just, you know, randomly poke a hole somewhere. What did I do? I think I came back through this way. 
Again, we know that I have plenty of string. You want to be careful not to uh, split the thread. That's another danger if you're using a really sharp needle. Okay. I should see what we're doing, how we're doing for time. Well, maybe we'll have time to do the other one. my original tail. I'm going to go back through there. And then back through there. Now it's at this point, you can see that that looks a lot better. This is some fuzz from the At this point, the concern or the, the thing to be aware of is, well, it's always a concern not to, to, not to split the thread, but to make sure that you come up on the other side of this thread. Now at this point, you're going to tighten. Now, you don't want to, to be so, so, exert such brute force that you tear the paper, but you do want it to be snug. Now, I was always taught that you pull these strings in the opposite direction. <coughs> this is when it would be nice to have a third hand. So you tighten it. What am I doing here? I've got a little, quite a bit extra. So note to sell, three times would be enough. So you make one knot, then you tie a knot in the opposite direction. And most of us, I think, do a third one just for peace of mind. So, because I have so much extra, I think what I'll do is leave it fairly long at this point. And of course, I'm not throwing that in the garbage. I will use it either for some slow stitching or whatever. Remove the clips and the clamps. Stand back and admire your workmanship. It doesn't hurt. No, I haven't been able to find my bone folder lately. I do, I do have several, but anyway, it never hurts to just sort of bend these, to press these, these signatures down. I know some people, oh, see, I've made some puncture marks there. I'm going to have to, I'll probably end up reinforcing that with washi or, well, depending how I decorate. Okay, because this is all about binding, I'm not going to take the time to, you know, do the work on the cover. I will just keep these pieces intact. <clears throat> I'll put this inside so it all hangs together. And I'll uh, set that one aside. Okay, let's give this a try now. So this little guy is only four and something tall. I did start making the template. I did not mark this cover.
four and I'd say four and three eighths. On either side. Again, it's a bit rattier a cover, so oops, my mark needs to be down here where I can see it. So life is probably easier if you use a uh, an odd number of signatures. So what I did, I found the center and um, I do have some space for this to, you know, bulk out a bit. So I think what I, my spacing between signatures is only going to be three eighths of an inch. A quarter seems like If I'm wrong about that, then some of this would have to be trimmed down. I'll stick with the three eighths. So, again, I've got my ruler centered. I'm going to do three eighths because, of course, now I'm going to have three, um, three lines going here. Now, if I were doing several journals all in the same, um, with the same size pages, same size si uh, spine, same size everything, I would do this template on cardstock so that it could um, more easily, um, you know, withstand the, the abuse. So four and an eighth I mean two and an eighth makes my center right here and I'll do another one here so I can have some nice straight lines across there again this is such a tiny book this time I'm going to use the all and um, I could just eyeball it. I th think, if I'm not mistaken, all the pages are pretty well full length. I'm only doing three uh, holes, so let's... Oh, let's mark this top also. Um, let's do it three-eighths from the top, three-eighths from the bottom. Three eighths. Three eighths. So now because I've made those marks, I can get my lines. And again, you know, aim for a little precision if you wish, but also understand that we're not splitting an atom here. I just make these these axes so that it's a little easier to see. Okay. So same scenario. Oh, let's just use paper clips here. I hope I don't make a ragged hole through the fabric. I guess I'll make one and check and see if it doesn't, um, if it looks kind of ugly, then I'll, I'll retreat from my plan. So I'm just poking a hole.
And again, because of the loose weave of the fabric, that is going in quite nicely. Now, the, the awl, of course, gets bigger in diameter the closer you, um, you know, the further you stick it in there. So, so then I'm just going to continue to make the holes. I'm going to make all nine of them. Again, this fabric is more forgiving than some others would be. <laughs> you can see that I used uh, green, uh, a piece of that green felt in between. Okay, so I only had two of these pieces of paper, so I made my third signature cover, the center one. I'm going to, again, I don't, well, I just, yeah, I better make sure everything is on the right side up. Since there is some writing, there are some images. Putting these clips a little further away from the center. I'm just going to try to get that in there nice and tight. And I am going to, again, center this. And you can see this top hole is going to miss. Miss the top edge of that one particular paper there. to get the clip on. Okay. So I'm just taking the awl again. I'm using the center hole because um, that those other um, the holes, those other markings were just for the for the cover. So you can see that came in despite not using a, you know what, I, oh, I can't change my mind now. I wish I would have, that wasn't very good thinking on my part. Keep your hand out of the way so you don't stab yourself when this finally breaks through. You know, that was, oh, guys, that was kind of dumb. This, I might have to turn this into a five hole. <laughs> yeah, that tore. Okay. Talk about... Adapting on, whoops, adapting on the fly. Because I, I didn't double check. Oh, God, that was a big hole. Because I didn't double check how much lower than the, than the cover the pages actually were, my little three-eighths of an inch from top and bottom was way too... High and low. Ugh. Oh, you know what? 
multiple thicknesses here because I have some folds. Okay, I think that rather than make you watch me do all three, I will, um, I'll just sew this one in. Oh, not so fast, young lady. I now have to make two more holes. No, four, uh, four more holes here. Oh dear. Let me stick this here. No, stick this here. As a placeholder. Where did I put my needle? I'll do a couple more placeholders and then I won't bother with the, that's too thick. I won't bother with the um, clipping. So aren't you glad I goofed up on this? Because this is... Adapting on the fly. Okay, not enough holes now. Okay. So just to keep moving along, I know that this is the top, even though I didn't mark it, because this is, so I'm going to, and I don't know if this is just, um, I should have kept that good needle out. That's a bit sharp. Anyway, maybe I'll risk, I'll risk some bloodshed just for that. Uh, just for you. Three times the height of the book. I don't know whether it's superstition or if there's a good reason for, for doing it or, or just in a common practice. Most people that I've seen will start with the back signature first. So that's what I'm doing. Oh. I forgot that this became a five-hole stitch, so <laughs> this will be another little experiment to see if, in fact, oh, see that, that's just random. I've got to be watching on both sides. So, back of the book, now I'm hitting, I'm not creating a new hole. I'm hitting the, the one that I poked with the, with the awl. Okay, shorter tail. Now I'm going to go in from this side and make sure that I hit mark one thing these um, holes that are made just with an awl certainly are a little more challenging To work with because they are quite a bit sloppier um, and I don't really mean that in a in a derogatory way this is also where you have to keep 
this is where I said you have to watch so I'm not going from here over to a, another signature set of holes. And again, you want to be careful not to, especially in a tiny little hole like this, you want to be careful not to split the thread. So doesn't this seem like fun and games? Fun and games, fun and games. I would say to simplify your life, for your first several books, do a three hole pamphlet stitch don't get as close to the, um, think of me, <laughs> and don't get as close to the edge as I have here. Because it is a challenge. And I am probably have created some trouble for myself. Not insurmountable, but no one needs the extra drama. You can see, I I'm, I'm, guess I'm glad I'm doing this, this uh, comparison here because you can see how much more challenging it is. That hole wasn't as quite as nice a size as some of the others, so I was having a little trouble getting through there. So maybe the good measure here oh. <laughs> You see what I've done? <laughs> Upside down. shouldn't be so cavalier with these with pulling this out because I'm just making the holes weaker how did that happen did you see that happen and you didn't tell me okay breathe just breathe just find a blunter needle too get rid of, not get rid of, but take out of this little box the ones that I'm least likely to use and save myself some of this time and hassle. Actually, a normal tapestry needle might even do the trick here. needles that are sort of this should be a good one what these needles that are sort of triangular do you see that uh, 
Oops. Okay. Here we go again. Back row of stitching. Look at the at the outside rather than just think that if you stab it through that hole that it will come out in the right spot. Then we're going to I make it okay that's good I can see some washi tape being required in my future reinforce these holes that are getting kind of larger and sloppier. See, that's not ideal. But we're not about to quit now. I'd say that's a good placement there. And then we're going through this hole here and here. And then back here. Oh, for those who are really paying attention and are still watching this gong show, um, <laughs> You'll see that I didn't do it the same way as I did in the other book. Which is not an, an accident, an oversight. It's in fact a purposely done boo-boo to provide another teaching opportunity. <sighs> if this journal mysteriously disappears, never to be seen again, You will know I think I need to, to rip this out again because if I do this yeah oh my goodness okay I didn't take all of it out this time Rethread. It would then have meant that I would be going through that center hole three times. And that, I think, would be just a bit too much. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
and people. And that doesn't look very straight. Because it isn't. Okay. Breathe. Get through there. Go through there. No, don't do that. Um, oh, I started to say don't skimp on thread. First time, too much. This time, it's starting to almost look like too little. So don't do that to yourself. You can see that there's enough other stuff to be concerned about without yet worrying about running out of uh, string. Sometimes you need to Well, you know what the problem is. No. That is one mistake I can make this time. I thought I had found a new way to screw this up. Um, I don't know who holds the current record for the number of times trying to try try and aside blah blah blah. I don't know who holds the current record for the number of times um, sewing in the same signature. But I dare say that I am in the running. Okay. That looks reasonable, or it will look reasonably straight once I tighten it. I should have been tightening as I go, my goodness. I need to get rid of some of this slack in the middle. The sad part is you're going to see if you if you hang in there you're going to see every single second of this fiasco because I don't know how to chop <laughs> oh goodness 
I can't figure out. Did I mention the three hole pamphlet stitch is my absolute favorite? <laughs> Has anyone ever cried on a YouTube video? I'm choosing to laugh, people, instead of crying. I think I better do one more because I lost track of where I was. <sighs> one signature in. Damn near killed me, but I did it. And because I am... I don't believe in cruel and unusual punishment. I'm not going to make you watch me sew in the other two. <sighs> I'm sure that the sheer quality of this video... <laughs> I'm sure that the sheer quality of this video has convinced you that you must subscribe. Never to miss another episode. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? I will, I'm, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to finish this on my own. And uh, yeah, one, one day soon there will be another sequel in the Celebration of Women Journals. Uh, yeah, thanks for hanging in there if you did. Bye-bye.